I think the, the biggest task, I think, of NATO is going to be keeping the Western public engaged. And you can only do that by talking about values and making it personal. What message is NATO sending? We were able, as allies, to release and declassify intelligence very early on, already starting with the last year. Of course, the attempt is this one, to weaken our resolve, but we, uh, we have tools to, um, to counter. NATO has been brilliant, I think, in the course of the crisis about countering uh, Russian disinformation with respect to Ukraine, and it's had an effect. I think our publics are on a much more even footing now between kind of what's real and what's false. Of course, the communications were not necessarily successful. They were not successful, and people were not believing them. So there is the highest ever support for NATO among our audiences. Russia's bad actions in Ukraine have awakened in us uh, the importance of things like democracy, like sovereignty. And once again, it seems to me that Russia is playing an animating sense inside the American public, and support for NATO has increased uh, accordingly. The fact that there is so much unprecedented public support in NATO has shown us that this is a great opportunity to be uh, proactive with our communications and by doing so, not only telling our story, but also showing to our publics what is NATO's response to this crisis. Therefore, for NATO to be effective, uh, effectively communicated to the American public, it has to do a number of things. It has to talk about Russia, it has to talk about China, it has to talk about climate change to get a very large uh, and diverse population interested in the alliance. If NATO, if Western governments lose the support of the public, which is what enabled them to, to provide the military assistance, to impose sanctions, to give money to Ukraine, then it's going to be very, very hard.